So, all right. So as you might see here, I am pretty um, raw. I have yet to shower this morning. I've been crying. Um, I'm just confused. I'm walking through my own trauma. But yesterday, um, I was speaking to a uh, somebody else, a practitioner, a doctor, and um, we we're talking about her health issues and you know, her body is expressing um, uh, autoimmune stuff. Hey, Elizabeth is expressing autoimmune stuff, so thyroid, parathyroid stuff. And she's done everything. And she feels better when she cleans her diet and she does everything right, right? And she's like, um, she feels better. Of course, we all, hey, Kim, we all feel better when we're eating right and moving and doing things, right? But, however, this is the whole thing. Like, if the trauma, now the trauma could be physical. Whatever happened could be physical, emotional, mental, whatever that, um, oh, my hair is just horrible. I have to shower this morning, but, you know, whatever. I said I'd be here on at 9, and I'm here. Um, so, whatever trauma happened has nothing to do with how you process that trauma. This is so huge. So you have a trauma that happened. It can be, remember the first um, first one of the series, we went over the three areas of trauma, right? So they're physical, um, emotional, or mental, right? Or spiritual. And uh, so you can break it into four. But So you can have trauma in all of those areas or one of those areas. It can affect the entire thing. But how you process trauma is going to be very unique, right? It's, it's going to be unique. And if your physical stature is, has more, um, more to give, like you can handle more trauma, your body, your soul is going to like level that out and it, it will store more of it. Also, if your body is kind of a weak link and it breaks down, remember we were talking about that in the other segments, um, those weak links are going to break down first, right? So for me, um, I'll be honest, like my weakest link is definitely mental. Um, depression is, is huge for me. It's something I have to watch. Um, it, it's my value and questioning my value is, is massive. I told you this was going to be raw. Um, my body is pretty friggin' strong, but it's still been on, um, it, it still gets affected by all of this, right? So you'll have a weaker link, right? And how I know that my mindset is, is off is because genetically, right? So we talked about the four ways. I'm just kind of reviewing here. We talked about the four ways that we get sick. So genetic, environment, uh, trauma, and bad habits. So bad habits you can fix in the You Matter Club. Get some great habits, try some on, right? We'll give you a habit a day that you can do and try on and, uh, and feel into. I'll also get you back on track. What I did is I've kind of um, not been on track with my habits. I, I let them go. I've, I've um, just I dropped it. I wrote that long note yesterday, right? Um, not all of them, but some really important ones. And so I'm just eliminating, eliminating that self-sacrificial crap and having to put, put myself first. Um, and everything else has kind of fallen to the wayside while I hadn't done that. So by putting yourself first, I do know that you feel better, your life feels better, Therefore, your relationships are better. You're more successful at work. Excuse me, like, oh, I, oh. you're more successful at work, and all that stuff happens. Hey, Shell. Um, do I pronounce that right? It's such a cool name. Or is it Shelly? Or I don't know. I want to know. And hello, Shelly. Um, so we're, you know, there's ways that we process, and there's like the weakest link for. So for me, like. I go through the trauma and um, and it doesn't like 
you have little traumas and you have big traumas and it doesn't matter like the scale of it um, how you process is it is going to be the same and usually especially with like PTSD and stuff and all trauma is too big to cope with that's what defines trauma right is something that is too overwhelming to cope with so we have this thing that's too overwhelming to cope with where you're hopelessly out of control and you look at it and you try to fix it and and you start coping with it now we cope through the four lower dimensions of of our being which is um, or I don't know if dimensions is the right word but our bodies which we're talking about now in this series our minds which we'll talk about in the next series um, I'm gonna go through this course first with the people that have signed up um, it's 333 188 bucks you're gonna get lifetime membership um, yeah it's friggin sweet and we'll coach specifics in inside that group um, and I don't know how big it's gonna be it might be really small so <laughs> go ahead and and join um, get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention um, the um, the other thing is emotionally right and then lastly spiritually so I'm talking to her oh, I was telling a story for those of you who just popped on so I was talking to her and she's having these thyroid problems she's having this stuff and and she's done everything she can like she eats really clean like she's like well now I'm having a glass of wine or whatever and I'm really enjoying my chocolates right but she's eating like 100% dark chocolate with ginger <laughs> From Trader Joe's, so it's um, and if you gotta go chocolate, like you gotta go chocolate, right? And chocolate's freaking good for you in a lot of ways, especially for us women. So, like she's doing this, and she's like, no, like compared to everybody, like I'm eating great. If you're doing everything, and you're still experiencing the trauma, and I'm going through my own thing. It's not a physical thing, but I'm going through my own thing this morning. So if, excuse me, like life is real, right? We have it. We have it. This is life. Um, then it's not it, right? If you keep trying to treat your physical body and your physical issue and you're doing everything that you can to treat the genetic and the environmental and you have good habits in place, if those three things are, are taken care of and really looked at and you're still experiencing it, it's still up in your face, you still are feeling um, out of control and that trauma, then it is not a physical issue. And oftentimes we get stuck in the cycle of what I'm going to call abuse, stuck in the cycle of like, ugh, 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 not feeling comfortable in our own skin because we are simply trying to treat the problem with, with what is, not the actual what's not really broken right so if you're trying to treat a physical symptom right which is the the cause of the physical symptom though is mental or emotional or spiritual and the trauma affected you there and the body is just as part of the unit of the whole helping you then um, you're not going to get results from physical treatments does that make sense I don't know who like it shows all you guys are live and then it says that you like pop off so that's just like interesting and then it says that you're on so just tell me if you if you get this thumbs up if I'm making sense okay so what I told her to do is look at the symptom right and honor it as something that she has to treat and know that's there but also really know that she's done everything physically that she can and to look at what she knows she knows that the trauma she knows what happened that threw her her life into chaos um, so it's like look at that and heal it dive deep and heal it in the other in the other zones and this is where and why like working with a private coach that knows what they're talking about that knows how to look at the symptomology but also <clears throat> also knows how to dive into and heal the other paradigms is so important um, and in all honesty I haven't heard anybody talk about this but me um, 
it, it's just what I'm supposed to do here, and I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. So, um, <laughs> like, that in itself is a whole different saga. Um, okay, so let's talk about one of the major areas that goes down. So we talked about how um, the main things that break in trauma is our coping skills. So fight, flight, or freeze, right? Fight, flight, or freeze is goes into effect. Rest and digest goes into effect. So we talked about those things. Um, and we talked about like the weight of it all. So rest and digest adds to the weight, right? You can't digest or you're overly digesting all of your food and you're adding the weight. The fight, flight, or freeze can lock your adrenals into, they're all acting together to save your life, right? So they lock your adrenals in and then you're either bulking up to fight or thinning out to run. Um, but also, it can affect uh, autoimmune diseases because the body starts fighting against itself, starts fighting the bad guys within. The, the weaker organs, the weaker things, prone to whatever's happening with you through your genetic line or your environmental line. So allergies might trigger it, other things like that. So we went through that, right? So first one we, went, we just reviewed, second one we just reviewed, and third one we just reviewed. Now we're on to the fourth is reproduction. So reproduce. Now, um, you know, there's so much, yeah, like maybe it'd be really hard to get pregnant. Maybe you'd have endocrine um, disorders or um, reproductive disorders, really bad PMS. I worked with my friend who's actually coming up, if you're in Alaska, she's coming up uh, at the end of the month, Honey Borden, and um, we really worked around healing from really bad cramps and I had to do the same healing methodology I did with her years ago with myself after I got my tubes tied last year. Huge. Um, but other things that happen that are less fun is um, we <laughs> we um, why is this hard for me to talk about? It's so funny. We don't orgasm Hey, or we don't get wet and we turn off our pleasure and why we turn off our pleasure is because it takes us to another dimension right if you've had a great orgasm if you've had an orgasm before you know you go someplace else it is transformational um, many 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 people who teach on manifesting teach about utilizing the power of orgasm to manifest, um, utilizing the power of your man to manifest. And I, uh, I have this like, look, I have a sit here, I have a sit there, a little stress maybe. Um, anyway, so sorry, I don't mean to like poke at it. Uh, I need to shower this morning. Okay, so we get on, um, to pleasure and we turn off our pleasure sensors so we can stay present and alert. Does that make sense? So we turn off our pleasure sensors and, and it turns off not only in down, you know, during sex or masturbation or all of that. It also turns off our pleasure sensors everywhere else. So then we have this like low grade depression that kicks in. And and we can't really reach the highs anymore because that surrender to surrender and let go is dangerous right it's dangerous it's not healthy and so we we just turn off right so to really get healthy it's about turning on again and there's a methodology behind it. <laughs> this I'm excited about um, because when you turn back on your pleasure sensors, not only is it sexual, but it's the rest of your life. So you're increasing that happiness in your life. Does that mean like days like today and yesterday in my life don't happen? That my crap doesn't come up anymore? That the human experience is no longer 
there? No, not at all. Like, it's real. It's real. It's here. Um, what it means is that there is some place, there's a formula of happiness, there's a formula of pleasure, there's a formula of surrender that I now can put into place at times like, well, this, right? At times like, like this. There is a formula that I can put into place. Now, once you get to where I am, there is also a great opening when you have the time and space to go into the crap feeling and whatever you've been resisting over time, whether it's a feeling or uh, a pain in your arm or a pain in your shoulder or a pain in your neck or a pain in your knees or, or a dis-ease, like when you can go into that with courage and kind of filter through it, there is, um, there is a lot, there's a lot of awesome stuff that can come up. However, sometimes we don't have time for that, right? Sometimes we have to do things. So you're going to have a recipe for pleasure and, um, by turning this back on. So there's different methodologies and different techniques. A uh, part of it is masturbation, getting to know yourself, getting to know what you like, what you don't like, because you're unique, um, making peace with this creative creation energy that you as a woman hold. Nobody else holds this energy. I mean, men don't hold this energy. As women, we have this creative creation energy within us that is, is paramount. Like, it's, it's healing, it is whole, it is life bringing. And that happens with, with pleasure, right? It happens to activate not only when we're pregnant and making babies, but also like when just in that region, the second chakra region, when we're activating into pleasure. So creating your pleasure recipe is really important. And that's something that we're going to be doing in the course. It's going to be part of the live version. I'll, I'll share with you how you create that that formula. Um, again, if you want more information about the course, it is AnticaLibby.com forward slash amazing dash body. And the links are on this page as well. Um, so how do you do this? The first thing is to um, have a conversation, that body wisdom that we talked about in the first series. Like, have that conversation with your womb space and also begin to feel what happens when we go through that trauma and we have our flight, flight or freeze stuck or digest and and um, rest stuck and then our our reproductive oh, system, excuse me let me know if you guys have any questions so reproductive system uh, kind of on lockdown, we're basically shut off. We're in survival mode. Okay, we are absolutely being survivors, and and everything is a fight when you're a survivor. Um, you, it's a constant fix. And I mean, I remember going, and I think I mean I I remember it. I remember sitting outside Penny Lane in Boulder, Colorado. And I was journaling, and I remember thinking, I am no longer a victim. I am a survivor. I did it. <laughs> I, like, I wish I had the journal, because I remember it. And now looking back, I'm just like, oh my gosh, what did I commit to? What did I commit to? And maybe that's what I need to break off today. I mean, but I was so clear. It was such a clear moment for me. But a survivor is constantly constantly fixing, constantly surviving. There's constantly something that is coming up, right? It might be little, it might be big, but there's constantly something coming up. There's very few, if any, moments of peace. So we want to get out of victimhood, we want to get out of survival, and we want to get into being present. And that's what this pleasure piece teaches you. It teaches you how to be ple present and how to surrender. Surrender to feeling good. 
Right? So it's different than like surrendering and spirituality and, and surrendering to God. It's like surrendering to feeling good, which takes huge friggin' courage. Huge courage. Um, if you're a woman that has orgasmed regularly her whole life, like congratulations because you don't understand how much courage this takes. Um, orgasm is something that you want to utilize to manifest, you want to utilize to um, tap into this pleasure source. Um, and, and awaken to our gift as a female, which is to carry, right, to caretake, as well as to um, create. Pleasure is right there with gratitude. Pleasure and gratitude walk together. Right? You, you don't really have pleasure, like true pleasure, without gratitude. Like you're so grateful that you have it and you're, you're walking, you're walking forward. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to give you a little formula or recipe here to begin awakening your womb space. Speak to your womb. Okay, that was the first thing I said. Speak to your womb space. Talk to your womb space. Heal with your womb space. Really, like what do you want to know? For me, it was like, I'm safe. You're safe. I respect you. You are more than just meat. You are precious to me. You are sacred. Right? I see that you can carry life and you're you're incredible. Thank you for being you. Right. So like I have this conversation with with my womb space. Next is um get in there and feel. Like we had this mirror exercise, maybe you've heard about it, it's really, really common, especially if you've gone through any sort of sexual abuse and sexual abuse therapy. Um it's a common practice, but you take a mirror and you just like look at your beautiful flower and you know let the value judgments come up let let the the thoughts and the things and whatever it is you let it come up and flow through you and throw out, flow out of you and just release um also utilizing your fingers and just feeling like where do you feel where do you not feel? Um, I went to a woman here, totally changed my relationship. She works internally with with people. I had a, a fallen bladder. Um, not too bad, right? Just like after birth, but when I sneezed and couldn't really run, and I mean, it still affects me a little bit, but it affected me a lot back then. And uh, I went to her, and I forget what she was called, but it's... um. You can probably look up her website, like New Vibrations in Alaska. Um, her name is Kim, if you're around. Anyway, she um, does myofascia release. And she does it um, everywhere, right, for people with injuries. But she also is one of the only people that, here anyway, that works within the vaginal wall. And she just held places. My hips released, my back released. And I began to feel when she was on the left side and the right side up and down where when we first started I was unable to feel. Now we can't really get this from a mate or a man because they're not there long enough for us to like go down and tap into it and understand. If somebody's holding one space, one tendon um, within you for five minutes at a time right until it, it releases on its own then you've you have this time to feel. You also have time to recognize that you don't feel. And that's often what happens. So when you have feeling and awareness there, then the body starts opening up. It relaxes everything so you can open up. So you can do this yourself. Um, I might have shorter arms than most or whatever, like you know you, but sitting up helps. And just just holding. This is not masturbation. It is, it's it's more of an exploratory, like holding the front of you, holding the sides of you, where where you awake and where you not, and talking to that womb space, talking to your your vaginal wall, and just saying it's okay, it's okay to wake up. Um, when I 
work with people in depth around um, healing sexual trauma, specifically and sexual trauma we go into um, recognizing the five layers of orgasms. What do they feel like? How do they create them and all of that? Um, I think that might, unless everybody in the group wants to go there, uh, it might be too much for for this short group, but it's definitely something that I've been passionate about since I studied in 2000-2001 um, with a Welcome to Consensus, and I've studied many, many other facets of, of the female orgasm and healing down there and wanting to be fully functional. Um, cancer really awoke that in me as well as um, simply just being being abused as a kid in that way and and turning off, shutting down. Um, there's a lot of stories, a lot of stuff. So a lot of times um, something happens with this might be trigger, so just warning. Um, something happens when we are abused, and there is um, there is natural pleasure, right? There is natural pleasure, and if you were abused as a child or as an adult, um, any time really, and there was any part of you that um, was reacting, like your body reacted to the abuse, where you didn't want to react to the abuse, where it wasn't. Um, appropriate mentally, physically, or emotionally to react to the abuse, but your body was reacting to the abuse and the abuser might have said something about that, like, oh no, you really do want this because, right, sorry, trigger. Um, that's normal. The body just does this. So it turned off to say, I'm not going to hurt you anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore, right? I'm not I, I, I won't do that and now if you're in a positive relationship and you want to have that opening it won't work because it's still protecting you it's still locked in that trauma and now you're having to use lubricants you haven't orgasmed in forever or it takes forever like I can orgasm in you know less than two minutes my first orgasm and I can have like up to ten or more in in a single session and there's different levels to them sometimes they're physical sometimes they're um, you know off the charts like running energy physical and sometimes they're gushing um, like I mean like like squirting and and all of this opened up the more I opened up to it and allow gave my body permission to react to react because as a kid I supposedly enjoyed, right? But I wasn't. I wasn't. So I started not trusting my body and I turned it off. And it took years of studying and trying to figure out what happened and then um, finally, you know, decades of friggin' counseling to get nowhere to finally have client after client after client after client after client after client after client tell me that this is their reality and eventually I was just like this is just reality this is just reality holy crap well let's reconnect to this powerful energy let's heal the body so it can react and so we can feel pleasure again and that's going to create your pleasure recipe so I give you three things to do um, to reconnect and tap into that uh, there's so many reasons why the body turns off this this source in order to um, just really open up and and say yes to say yes to the rest of the world, say yes to, I don't even know what I'm saying, I kind of went blank, just say yes, this is your yes, this is your yes, this is your turn on, this is your yes, right, and when we shut down and we turn off, um, we are off, and when that relationship between you, your other realms, your body, I mean your mind, your emotional body and your spirit, and your body have been thwarted and messed up in some way through 
through a trauma or through abuse, um, which is trauma, right? Then to reclaim your power, you have to get in there and you have to reform a relationship. And forgiveness is a really big deal. All right, so I hope this helps you. Um, join the group if you want to go deeper, one one on one coaching around this. We're going to go into how to heal the body from trauma, specifically in this group. And I'm not talking about heal the body from body trauma. I'm talking about letting, really supporting and honoring your body and how it is processing trauma for you so you can dive deeper into it. And then over over time we'll go into the other realms too so you can really reclaim all of you. The other way to do this is through one-on-one -on -one coaching where we'll dive deep into all of it over 12 sessions and um, there's that, yes. And then I do have openings if anybody in here is interested in being a holistic health coach and being trained to walk your clients through this. It's a year-long training. Uh, you can find out more information at your own university and apply, no obligation to apply, and send me that. So I hope that you say yes to one of those or at the very least just really talking to your womb space and healing this womb space and knowing that the basic systems of survival, this is one that goes into hibernation and protection so it uses the least amount of energy in order to process your trauma for you and with you all right you guys love you bye